In this video, I will be benchmarking my portfolio against Kathy Wood's ARK Invest and then tell you why I think I'm outperforming it currently and what is my strategy in continuing to outperform Kathy Wood. And by the way, of course, I have mad respect for what ARK Invest and Kathy Wood are doing. Um, basically, I'm trying to do something similar by really um, researching the stuff and the stocks that I'm going into. So I'm also going to tell you a little bit about my personal strategy and investment um, philosophy possibly and um, well, why I am not going to meme stocks instead trying to uh, find fundamental picks and look to invest on the long term, which by today's um, stock frenzy and crypto markets and stuff is almost conservative. But now let's have a look at the portfolio. The software that I'm using to track my portfolio is called Portfolio Performance. This allows me to well, manually um, keep track of all of my different portfolios and stocks. So in, in general, I'm having different portfolios. So um, some of them are more conservative, some of them are more aggressive and I need to combine them. There's also the crypto portfolio, um, stocks, um, there is uh, options trading and stuff. So different kind of portfolios that I try to combine and track the portfolio and this software um, yeah, allows me to do that. And by the way, of course, this is not a sponsored post. Um, that's just the, the software that I um, yeah, uh, found and found useful to actually do that. Uh, it's not perfect, but uh, well, as you will see now, it allows me to do some stuff. Because what it allows me to do is to track my portfolio over time. So here you have a, let's say, two years period. Um, the black line is my portfolio. Um, so you can see um, how it uh, has been performing over time. The red line here is as a benchmark ARK Invest. Um, I think it's the innovation ETF. So that uh, should be ARK W. And um, the blue line is just as a standard um, index, the S&P 500, um, just as a reference here. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, like I can now um, see my uh, historical performance uh, on a daily basis, on a quarterly basis and such um, benchmarked against other um, stocks or even uh, indexes or ETFs and such like that. And that across everything like including crypto, including stocks and so on. And as you can see, historically, my portfolio um, has outperformed the ARK Invest Fund here, the red line um, significantly. Um, of course, mainly in 2020, which has been a great year, but then in the last year, um, still I am up um, yeah, now on a, on a one year basis more than or closely to 80%, I would say. So roughly back to the um, February highs, uh, which have been uh, really a, a highest peak uh, during the last couple of months, but now um, coming back to these highs. And as you can see um, here, there is now um, kind of a gap opening up um, in the last quarter um, between not only the S&P 500 performance, but also the ARK Invest funds here. So let's talk about that in a second. But generally, my investment strategy is to try to find uh, such kind of multi baggers like uh, Tesla, like NIO, like Bitcoin, like Tencent. These are the four stocks that I have invested so far, which became a 10x investment uh, on my behalf. So that was uh, the good shots that I had so far. And um, now, of course, looking to get into the next ones possibly. And I will talk about this in a second. But um, so far, uh, if I look at the performance of this year, it wasn't really good after having those really high peaks in February, then selling off. Um, that, by the way, was almost in sync with the ARK Invest funds here uh, because my strategy is kind of similar. I also invest in innovation, but obviously I'm investing more um, recently, even more so um, towards a China specific strategy. So either companies that might be actually US companies, but are exposed to China, such as Tesla or other stocks that are, of course, Chinese and US listed like NIO. But of course, my portfolio had really a, a large drawdown uh, during the last couple of quarters and is only starting to recovering now. And what I think helped me during those tougher times during this year, which uh, frankly was a hard time as a growth stock investor, uh, was also exposure to one stock, namely um, Infineon, which is one of my largest positions as well in the portfolio which is a German company. 
uh, in the chips industry and that was well sought after as well as another big position which is in crypto um, in bitcoin is my main position actually in in crypto related stuff and that always helped when this whole um, inflation fear was playing out and so um, that also helped sometimes in balance uh, my growth stocks there but now what is becoming more and more significant is now this huge boost um, that has happened in the last couple of months and we're also now this gap between the ARK funds and uh, my portfolio is widening again and so what are the reasons for it well, during most of this downturn here, what I have been doing is I have been averaging down on some of my conviction stocks, um, namely my new calls, which are SAP Health and Axnet. So if we're looking here at the buys of my Axnet position, I started, uh, initiated uh, during Q1, unluckily, during this uh, peak time in uh, the Chinese stocks, um, during the high times, and then average down already significantly in the first quarter um, had kind of a pause going on uh, and now have started actually buying more aggressively into uh, Axnet again during Q3 uh, and uh, basically averaging down my position here and more recently I've been doing the same for SAP Health I'm averaging down my initial cost base which was around 11 US dollars now it's coming down as well and now, of course, these stocks haven't been performing great during this year. I'm still waiting for a recovery there. But recently we had a 20% jump into those stocks as well. Uh, similarly, also in NEO. So although NEO also hasn't been performing great um, after the sell-off during this year, um, still um, it has recently had a, a significant jump in the stock price although people um, emotionally don't feel that but if you look at the stock in October it has actually had this increase and so uh, now that these stocks are becoming um, a higher having a higher weight in my portfolio especially Xnet and um, SAP Health once these stocks are going up I can uh, finally see that they can also have a significance in my portfolio because before they were just tiny positions and now um, whenever these stocks are kind of bouncing from these low levels um, I can see also a, a significant boost to my uh, portfolio performance there uh, similarly of course I am very overweight on Tesla and so while I think um, yeah NEO has been the reason why I've been outperforming um, ARK Invest funds uh, during uh, 2020 uh, where NEO has uh, really had uh, one of the highest increases uh, even higher than Tesla I, I think now I also play out the strength that I also have a higher um, position or a share of Tesla than uh, for instance even Kathy has in her funds in ARK Invest and so now we have this huge run uh, which is definitely given a very nice boost to my portfolio right now here and so even though NEO hasn't really um, taken off and um, recovered to their all-time highs yet um, Tesla has done so and even exceeded them and um, that has given my portfolio this big boost here and still waiting for NEO and some other of those Chinese stocks to make even a more significant recovery so you can see my strategy of course is here doubling down on some of the conviction names where I find bargains I usually don't like to chase um, momentum in terms of finding uh, let's say uh, Lucid as a stock here which recently has you know one day 30 to 40 percent um, based on almost nothing and um, yeah I'm not trying to chase such kind of uh, sentiment and moments to shift uh, I rather try and see to increase um, positions in which I have uh, the fundamental insight onto the company where I think the company is undervalued and where on the other hand I see a, a tremendous upside and frankly in uh, stocks like Xpeng or in Lucid I don't see how they could do a 5x or 10x um, over time but I do see uh, the same potential in stocks like SAP Health or in Shinlei and so um, that's why uh, phases like these uh, for me there are accumulation phases where I'm trying to um, increase my exposure in terms of if um, the fundamentals of the company hasn't changed if 
uh, the thesis is still playing out. And so I think in case that we see a rebound in Chinese names, um, um, that gap between uh, the ARK funds and, and my portfolio should actually um, get wider and increase. Um, of course, I could be wrong with this call. What could happen instead is uh, that some of the US um, stocks to, to which the ARK funds are more exposed, like some of those growth names have been um, beaten down uh, by a lot as well and haven't recovered all time highs as well. Uh, maybe that would be the next step uh, that could happen by the end of the year, for instance, could be uh, another bullish run here. And maybe the timing for the Chinese stocks is still not there. And so in this case, I think we would see that uh, the, the gap between my portfolio and the ARK funds will be closing again. But otherwise, um, in case the Chinese stocks are already becoming on vogue again, and there will be demand, as I've pointed out in some of the other videos, um, I think there might be macro reasons to believe why this could be the case. Ray Dalio and Bridgewater, BlackRock, um, HSBC, UBS and all of these major institutions are kind of, uh, in my views, uh, starting to position themselves uh, of becoming overweight on China. And so, um, yeah, the, the timing here is, of course, an issue. But um, for me, my strategy right now to hopefully continuing to outperform um, Cafe here would be um, to bet on this uh, increasing demand for Chinese names at some point in time. This strategy is pretty risky, of course. Uh, I'm personally a, quite a big risk taker when it comes to investing, so you don't have to repeat that. Uh, in fact, this is nowhere near investment advice, and I would say you should go out there and try and find different sources and invest into something that you really understand and where you feel con comfortable with. On the other hand, this channel is called the China Opportunity for a reason. Uh, I do think there is um, lots of fear, uncertainty and doubt and misalignment around Chinese names. And I think in the long run, this strategy will win out. Otherwise, I wouldn't go out there and telling people. But unfortunately, this kind of risk also means that from time to time, I have to go through major drawdowns. Um, it's not unusual that I'm down minus 30 to minus 50 percent in a name. Um, we have stuff happening like with Futu and Tiger, where luckily I managed to exit my Futu position around 150 US dollars a share. But for Tiger, I wasn't as lucky. I first bought in Q3 2020, had a nice run up, um, managed to sell some of it during Q1 2021. But then I actually also bought some more during some of these drawdowns and actually quite recently as well. Tiger stock, of course, is something to watch in the next couple of months um, because it tells us a little bit about the opening up of the Chinese um, capital markets, maybe or not. What will be the regulation around this? And of course, now that the valuation has come down, um, that might be something to well, um, tip the toe into the waters. Again, for me, it's just a very small position, less than 1% of my portfolio right now. So it doesn't play a major role. But um, in the future, that one might be a interesting dip to buy. Let's see. I will give a more detailed update on my uh, specifics of the portfolio, like um, what is the weight of each of the stocks and my buys and sells and uh, investment signals as well as um, yeah, my strategy going forward um, for the patron community um, for the 10 US dollars tier. So if you want to join some of these live calls or um, the videos, um, make sure to become a patron. And otherwise, of course, I will keep you updated here on the channel and on each of those uh, stocks in specific. Of course, I've seen your comments around stocks like Sap Health and Shinlei. Um, I have material that will be coming out uh, and new videos on those stocks. Sometimes it just takes a little bit more time to uh, compile it, uh, you know, doing all of the background research, the financial um, analytics for it and stuff like that. So bear with me while I am compiling that material. And then thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one and see you in the next one.